Hey everybody, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar. Today I want to show you a picking pattern that I've been getting wrong my entire life. So I used to play, I'll just play right up here at this high part. Um, I used to play it like this, watch my picking hand especially. So that's the part right after the build up in the beginning. When you climb up like this, you get to the top. So I used to play it like that. And the problem with that is you're playing a lot of bass notes. Watch my thumb. See, that's like, it's way too much low end going on when you play it like that. But it sounded good enough to pass. And then I went through a phase where I was playing it with my thumb alternating across many strings. So it went like this. I started doing that because of uh, Dear Prudence, the way John Lennon plays, his thumb moves like that all the time. It's a very, uh, ba I don't want to say basic, it's not easy, because people think basic means easy, but it's a real fundamental uh, thumb movement when you're playing a lot of finger picking. So, when I really broke it down, I brought up some Blackbird live videos of Paul McCartney, and I slowed it down to 50%. I love that slowdown feature on YouTube, by the way. It's been uh, teaching me a lot of details. And I really watched his picking hand. And so for copyright reasons, I'm not going to play Blackbird up to speed or anything like that, but I'll show you the most fundamental ideas of the picking. So first of all, it's a little surprising because sometimes this is considered a bad technique, but it's Paul McCartney, so he can do whatever he wants. Take your pinky and put it on the guitar. That has to be an anchor of yours. You'll find out in a little bit why that's important. Your thumb is going to be playing a very steady rhythm when you play uh, the low notes with your thumb. So I'm going to go back up to this area where we're in the G, the G spot I almost said. We have the G here. I did not plan that, by the way. That just came out. And then up here we have the B. I call this the G spot because we have the G note, and then we're going to be playing the open G string quite a bit. Oh, I said G spot and G string in one video. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm not starting over, I'm going to keep going. Keep your pinky where it is, use your thumb, and check out this pattern. So that's the basic idea. Now a long time ago I remember watching a video of Paul doing it, but I couldn't slow it down at the time, and his index finger was just flicking like that. I was very confused, I'm like, what's he doing? Is he just kind of just strumming like that or what? So now it all makes sense, because if you break it down, here's what's happening. Your pinky is keeping the anchor, you hit the outside notes first. So I'm going to hit this G with my thumb on the fifth string, and I'm going to hit this B on the second string with my index finger. And by the way, he just uses those two fingers throughout the song. We're going to pluck, so those are the outside notes. Then this is surprising to me because I've never really done this before. You're going to take your index finger and you're going to swipe it across the G string, so the third string, and it's going to sound like this. So you're actually using your fingernail to play that note, like that. It feels very strange at first because I was so used to plucking this direction whenever I played the third string, but now I have to do it downward. Very strange, and I've been growing my nails out a little bit for a future finger picking lesson, which will probably be in my next video, but it's coming in very handy for Blackbird, by the way. Okay, so I do the down stroke with my index finger on the third string, and then you do an up stroke on the B string, so now you're on the second string, like that. So you get this really interesting back and forth going on. It's kind of hard to do unless your pinky is anchored. If you're going like this and going back and forth, it feels like you're unstable. So it could be thought of as bad technique for some people. It's actually a very important tool in this case. So that's something to get used to, the back and forth there. Then the thumb comes back and hits the low G again. And then you're going to hit an, another up stroke with your index finger on the second string. Like that. So. So far we went like this. We hit them together, the outside notes. We did the index finger downstroke on the G on the third on the third string. Upstroke on the B string with the same finger. Your index finger's got a lot of work to do. It's got a big job. Then we have the low G with the thumb. Another upstroke now on the B string with the index finger. And then the final move is very interesting to me. You're, you're going to do another down stroke with your index finger, but instead of hit, just hitting the G, 
Sometimes you can't really help it, but you're gonna end up hitting the G and the B, because it's more of a flicking motion, like a, like that. So kind of like you would do with a guitar pick, just kind of playing through a couple strings. It just hits downward, almost in a percussive way. Sounds like you're striking it like that. All right, now any finger picking is kind of confusing when you break it down that slow, but when you start to speed it up, it'll start to sound like the song and the rhythm, and it'll make sense. But before we do that, let's do it again, kind of slow. We have the outside notes. We have the downstroke with the index finger on the third string. We have the upstroke with the index finger on the second string, B. And then we have the thumb again. Thumb comes back and hits the low G. Upstroke on the second string, first finger. And then you're finally gonna do that little percussive downstroke across the G and the B strings. Okay, I'll start to put that together here. The best part is you can utilize this new downstroke with the index finger on the entire song. As you know, if you've played it before, there's a lot of open G string happening where you're playing like this. Like that. And like I said before, I would just go like this and pluck it like a normal finger picker would. That was my move. But now I have to retrain myself to go like this. Is that interesting? And you're up here. See, it starts to feel and sound natural when you get uh, up to speed with it. Then we're gonna climb, and I'm gonna do this just once here, but watch my index finger, how much work it has to do. Wasn't that great? So every time there's that open G, it's the index finger flicking downward. And you walk it down like this. Paul likes to use his ring finger here. Slide it back, slide it again. Go to the index finger, this is the one that changes to the D string, and then we're back home. Now if you're having trouble with this pattern, do what I recommend usually and exaggerate your practice. So I'd mute the strings, this is what I love to do, and just get the percussive sound of the strings going. Then try to do the pattern real slow and just get the timing right and the direction correct. Seems weird, but it's very effective. Then when you go to a chord, let's say you're doing this. Suddenly it feels a lot better. It sounds better, obviously. And uh, you just have this real confidence when you play it after that exercise. So hopefully that works out for you guys. Hopefully if you had issues with Blackbird your whole life like I have, now it's finally to the point where you're as close as I could possibly get you to playing it correctly. All right, guys. Hopefully that was fun. I love finding out these little details and sharing them with you. And we'll catch you at the next lesson where I've been practicing some finger picking. And I promised myself I would do 100 reps of the song before I brought it to you. So I'm on about 75 now. I should be ready by tomorrow. So look out for that video. Okay, guys. Thanks. Bye.